Hi guys, so welcome back to our final four weeks of the semester. So I hope you have um, had your uh, good holiday. Okay, good Raya, good Gawa and everything. So let's continue today's lesson on chapter 9, which is promotional mix. So basically, there are seven uh, subtopics in this chapter 9. However, I will not go through the whole thing for this station so we're gonna just stick with um, the first four parts of this chapter in this part one um, next week we will continue with uh, 9.5 uh, 6 and also 9.7 so in today's lesson which is the first part of this chapter we're going to cover on what is actually a promotion mix Okay, the goal of promotion, the IDA concept, and also we will look at the first promotion mix that you're going to learn in um, this chapter, which is uh, advertising. Okay, so in advertising, we're going to learn on the definition of it, the major types of advertising, as well as we're going to look also on the media decisions in advertising. So are you guys ready with the slides? Although it will look a little bit different than the one that you have printed out because I got bored just now. So I uh, tried to um, make the, the slides look a little bit, um, I don't know, appealing to me. Hopefully it is also appealing to you. Okay, so let's look. What is actually the promotion mix? So when you talk about promotion, this is the third P of your marketing mix. Remember your marketing mix, there are four P's, right? The first one is product. Then you have learned on place. So this will be the third one, which is promotion. And later in chapter 10, we're going to learn on the price. Okay, I hope you still remember all those your marketing mix. So in the promotion mix, there are also four, yeah? Now let's, before we look at the four promotion mix, let's look at what is actually a promotion. It is a communication by marketers that informs, persuades, and also reminds potential buyers of a product in order to influence an opinion or elicit a response. So the promotional strategy is a coordinated plan, yeah? For the optimal use of elements of the promotion mix, which are advertising, personal sellings, sales promotion, and public relations. So this is your promotion mix, okay? Or promotional mix. It's a combination of the tools of the promotion. So sometimes it is called promotion tools. Sometimes it is also known as promotion mix. Basically, it is this four things, which is advertising, sales promotions, public relations, and personal selling. So like I told you, in this first part of the chapter, I'm going to cover only on the advertising. Okay? So um, before we look into the advertising itself, let's look at what is, what is actually the goal of promotion. Well, when you do promotion, okay, it seeks to modify the behavior and thoughts in some way and also to reinforce the existing behavior of the market. Thus, the goal of promotion is to inform, to persuade, and also to remind. So, the first goal of promotion, which is to inform, it is about informing the market, yeah? So, um, in this type of promotion, informative promotion which is um, done prevalently during the early stages of the product life cycle, when it can actually increase demand for a product category. This is um, to explain to the, to the customers or to the public or the market itself about the purpose and also benefits of a good or the service that you are selling. And some complex products often require informative promotion that will explain some technical benefits, especially when you want to, to buy your a laptop, for example. So you will not just want to look at the look of your laptop, but rather into some technical aspect or technical benefits of the laptop before you purchase the product. Secondly, to persuade. Now with the word persuade, okay, we have the word pers persuasion here, which is the second promotional task, which, which is simply attempting to motivate a consumer to purchase or use more of the product. So persuasion normally becomes the primary promotional goal when the product actually entering the growth stage of the product life cycle. Okay, this is because you wanted to convince the customer to buy your company's brand rather than the competitor's brand. Remember in your growth stage of the PLC, this, the competitors started to come in. 
right? So as the competitors start to come in, you have more um, persuasion need to be done so that customer will always choose your brand over the competing brands. And the third one to remind, which is a reminder promotion used to keep the product and brand name in the public's mind. Okay, a reminder promotion is normally common during the maturity stage of the product life cycle because the product has been in the market for so long, right? Somehow or other, you don't want to uh, actually inform them about the product or you don't want to be um, persuading them, but rather you want to remind them about the goodness of your product, okay? Which is to trigger the memory of the customers about your brand, okay, right? Okay, moving on to the IDA concept. Now, IDA concept is actually a classic model for reaching the promotional goal, which it stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. So it allows, uh, sorry, it outlines the stages of this consumer involvement with the promotional message, okay? Whether you want to get attention from your customers, you want to hold the interest, arousing their desire to purchase or even obtaining their action to purchase the product immediately. Let's look at this particular idea concept one by one. Now, when you talk about attention, the first one, which you must first gain the attention of the target market, okay? As you already need uh, have a new product in the market, you want them to be paying attention to your product, okay? So typically, in gaining the attention, customers will want to see something that is attractive, okay? Something that is different than the others, like how you pay attention to certain products because the color is so bright or because um, the sound of it is so unique, okay? And some other elements that you can actually create the attention for customer to actually uh, feel that they wanted to know more about your product. Second, which, which is interest, okay, is the next step to create an interest of the product. After you have gained the attention, next, customer will already notice about your product. Now, you want to create that interest by giving them what they want to know more on the product itself, especially on the benefits of the product. Because they feel interested, they started to know what is this product all about, okay? And then, you go to the third step which is the desire which is the desire to purchase the product itself when customer already know and feel interested about your product you want to make them feel that they must have the feeling of wanted to buy okay not just that oh okay i don't need it now no i don't want it now okay but rather you want to get them to actually feel that they really want to buy the product. So that is when you're able to create the desire, especially when you start to say that um, the product is actually a hot selling product, or you can say that, oh, this is the last item, or today is the last day of promotion, okay? So that is when you actually feel that, um, sorry, you make them feel like they have to buy it now, all right? That is when you create the desire for the customer. And lastly, the action, which is the final step in this purchase decision, which you want them to actually make the payment, okay? Action is actually they go to the counter and they tell you, okay, I'm buying this, okay? And exchange took place when there is an action, when customer decided to purchase the product that you are selling, okay? So um, the promoter's task is actually to determine where on the purchase step most of the target consumer are located okay are they it at the attention stage or are they in the interest uh, desire or even action stage so you can actually design a promotion to meet this particular needs if your customer do not know about your product then you must actually find out that you need to create their attention okay or if they already know about your product next they wanted to know more about your product so that is when you realize that they are actually at this interest stage okay or if they keep on asking you about um the price of the product so normally uh, the cue or the the sign that the customer have the desire to buy is when they start to ask about the price of the product okay so that is when they 
have the action like for example they start to grab their purse or wallet okay there is you can see some actions that they are making and then or actually picking up your product and bring it to the counter for payment that is actually an action so you already know um, this particular uh, customer would like to purchase your product now each of these promotional tools is more effective at certain stages of this idea just now uh, for example this advertising is more effective in gaining attention public relations are also greatest uh, impact giving here in giving the attention for a company or product or good yeah, or a service itself uh, while the sales promotion is most effective in creating strong desire and also purchase intention and personal selling are basically effective in creating customer interest because you have that uh, personal touch or personal uh, knowledge about that particular customer so you know what do they have interests that are actually um, suitable for the product to them next moving on uh, sorry about this one this is supposed to be 9.4 okay which is advertising we're going to look at the definition of advertising major types of advertising and also some the of the decisions that need to be made before you decide on what advertising types that you're going to use now let's first look at the definition of advertising it is actually impersonal one-way mass communication when you talk about impersonal that means it is not for one person it's for everybody or it's for the whole public all right and it is a one-way mass communication one way because it is just from the advertiser to the whole customers or the whole market okay so it's a communication about a product or it can be also about an organization that is paid okay there is paid there is no free advertising but somebody must be paying for that advertisement all right so that is why they call it paid by the sponsor all right so by looking at this particular um advertisement for example you will know that there is something that they're showing here is about the product is the car and right? not and you know it is paid by whom by looking at this particular logo can you tell me which company is this car from i think guys should know right now if you do not know please google who produced the mini cooper next um this one for example you can see clearly about the product itself what it does okay where you can see there is a brand here sharpie so sharpie actually is the one that paid for this particular advertisement so continue again now when you talk about advertisement or advertising cost per contact is very low because advertising can reach such a large number of people however the total cost to advertise is actually very high this is because when you talk about uh, putting up an advertisement in a newspaper for example for one day advertisement whole full page colored okay on a newspaper for example on a borneo post um, that particular advertising cost could reach up to 30,000 or 40,000 ringgit okay that is the whole page full color and it is on let's say on the first few pages of the newspaper and if it is on the front page of the newspaper then it will be very very more much more expensive however when you talk about the cost per contact it is low because when you divide yeah the total cost just now divide with a large number of people that will be rich using that particular advertisement we're talking about let's say tv advertising for example when you want to advertise on tv you need to pay for the production cost Okay, you need to, pay to you need to pay for the actor the actress the editing team and the director and so on okay so um that cost could be reaching up to fifty thousand. however when you start to advertise that particular um advertisement on television it can reach millions of people okay or if let's say you are putting it on youtube or on uh, instagram for example um the viewers okay the viewers can reach up to millions so when you divide let's say fifty thousand 
cost of producing that particular advertisement divide with let's say it reach about 50 million people then cost per contact will be very very cheap okay so that is what you call by cost per contact is very low but total cost to advertise is very high now there are two major types of advertising yeah the first one is institutional advertising and the second one is product advertising when you talk about institutional advertising it is used if the goal of the campaign is to build the image of the company rather than to promote a particular product institutional advertising typically advertise about the company not the product while the product advertising itself of course from the word product here it displays the benefits of the specific goods or service now institutional advertising um, has four important audiences which is of course the public itself the investment community the customers and the employees uh, there is a unique form of institutional advertising which is called the advocacy advertising now this advocacy advertising is a way of for corporation to express their views on some controversial issues and many advoc advocacy campaign react to some criticism or blame uh, media attacks or impending legislation this type of advertising is actually to support some causes right that particular organization talking about uh, some controversial issues or some um what they call it uh public concerns okay for example when um there is this COVID 19 for example then you will see a lot of um advertisement on tv about how you should actually be doing social distancing right you shouldn't be in the crowded places you should wear your uh, facial mask and so on so that is actually how that particular organization um actually create or support some causes um let's say another example could be uh, save the environment by wwf to to not let people um do those what they call it uh the deforestation for example because it will kill the habitat of the this wildlife animals all right uh, or uh, stop uh throwing rubbish into the ocean that we kill the blue whales and so on all right so that kind of advertising is called the advocacy advertising next is the product advertising okay so there are actually three types of product advertising namely pioneering advertising competitive advertising and comparative advertising a pioneering advertising is intended to stimulate the primary demand for a new product or the product category itself so binary advertising typically to inform the customers about the product because it is new okay the competitive advertising is actually to influence demand for a specific brand and is often used when a product enters the growth phase of the product life cycle competitive advertising typically emphasis on the benefits or the uniqueness of a brand while comparative advertising you will have in that same advertisement comparing two or more specifically named or shown competing brands on one or more specific product attributes okay comparative means you actually shows your brand and brand x okay or uh, you don't use brand x you can also use like uh, coca-cola compared to pepsi or, or uh, dynamo compared to um breeze for example the detergent yeah or you can also see a lot of uh, comparative advertising by samsung towards their competitor which is apple all right and competitors oh sorry the advertisers often make taste price and also preference claims in the reference to the competition of this particular comparative advertising okay moving on to the media decision in advertising okay so a media okay is a medium yeah, which the channel which is the channel that is used to convey a message to the target market in media planning okay it is essentially a series of decision advertisers need to make regarding the selection and use of the media to communicate the advertising message to the target audience because there are many media yeah so the media categories include broadcast media printed media online media and also other medias so this could be some of the example that you will actually know you will see of course online okay or on television 
or you can see it anywhere while you are watching TV okay or even in your newspaper or on your phone so there are actually seven major types of media please do not get uh, confused with advertisement yeah when you talk about the uh, types of advertisement you have all those uh, institutional advertisement and also, sorry institutional advertising and product advertising and under product advertising you have the pioneering cooperative and also comparative just now now we talk about media okay there are seven major types of media for you to do the advertising okay first one is magazine sorry first one is newspaper and magazine radio tv internet out of home and also alternative media so of course you know newspaper right although sometimes it is not uh, today no more like physical newspapers using papers but there are also newspapers online okay or e-newspaper so newspaper advertising has the advantages of having a geographic flexibility and also timeliness okay and newspapers can reach a very broad mass market uh, when you talk about geographic flexibility, this is when you can actually know where these newspapers are being published, okay, and to whom or to which location that this newspaper are being published. For example, if you want to target your market in Sabah and Sarawak, so you will be able to know that you can actually use Borneo Post, okay, Utusan Borneo, Utusan Sarawak, right, to advertise your product. If let's say you are targeting your products to the West Malaysian all right, market, the West Malaysian market, they don't have Borneo Post, yeah? so you will not be advertising and using that media uh, of Borneo Post. Of course, it will not reach to those people in West Malaysia. So perhaps you might want to use the Star uh, newspaper or the New Streets Time. Uh, or Brita Harian or Sinar Harian, okay, for you to uh, reach those geographic location and also timeliness because you know when it will be published, okay, a newspaper. If you want to uh, advertise tomorrow, then you'll be able. You need to know when is the deadline for you to submit your advertise or advertisement so that they will be able to publish it tomorrow. Or if let's say you are targeting it to be published at the end of the month, then you will know. Uh, on the 30th of June, for example, you wanted to advertise the product. So there will be time that you can actually uh, look forward in order for you to choose uh, the timing of your advertisement to reach the market. Uh, there is also this cooperative advertising in an arrangement in which the manufacturer and also retailer can split the cost of advertising the manufacturer's brand okay um i'm not sure whether you actually know about this or not but if you actually have read have read some uh physical papers yes? physical newspapers um, you try to grab it one if you can have it at your home you will see that there are some uh, advertisement whereby there is an advertisement of this retailer okay they will advertise some of the products that are on promotion in their advertisement for example um l supermarket uh, the retailer okay is the l supermarket so l supermarket put in the newspaper or advertise in the newspaper the items that are on sale in their supermarket and those items are actually manufacturers product like uh, when they say okay dynamo offer or milo offer how much is it um nescafe offer a uh, reduction in the price okay or you save 10, 10 ringgit when you buy the dynamo or you save 30 cents when you buy the um yos soya milk okay so those are the brands of the manufacturer now what happened is that when they do the advertisement they will split the cost of the advertising okay with those um, manufacturers who sell that particular product um, in this case you will also see that some i some products that are actually on sale at the HL supermarket are not being advertised this is because that particular perhaps that particular manufacturer did not um contribute or cooperate okay in the advertising cost okay so that is when you do this cooperative advertising in the newspapers typically the retailers which is uh which are 
the supermarkets yeah they always do this because they want to spread the cost so they put the name of the product and also the picture of that particular manufacturer's product on that advertisement and tell them tell the public or tell the market that they are actually on uh, sale right second one magazine so you know magazine do you read magazine or not whether it is actually printed or online magazine Magazine are often targeted to a very narrow market because they know who are their readers of this particular magazine. Okay, although they may have a very higher cost per contact, but the cost per potential customer much will be much more lower. Okay, because it can be directed towards that particular group of people or that target market directly because your target market could be also the readers of that particular specific magazine for example if you are a bridal okay you are a bridal shop so you wanted to advertise about your bridal bridal package you will know that those people who wanted to get married will always read the magazine like the wedding or the uh the bride the magazine or it, there are also malay magazine um what they call that thing uh Impian, something impian, is it? Perkahwinan impian kah? Okay, all those type of magazine that are actually will be bought or will be read by the potential uh, bride and also potential groom. Well, the groom will normally, normally don't read the magazine lah. The brides are normally, okay? So that's why there is a magazine named The Brides, alright? Which is solely devoted for the brides. They are going to get married. So if you are... The bridal company you want to advertise about your product you know where to advertise it okay so that is what you mean you can actually target to a very narrow market next radio of course you listen to the radio only when you are in your car isn't it okay so it also can be directed to specific audiences and has a, sorry has a large out of home audience okay out of home because normally you will uh, listen to the radio when you're in car or driving okay and it has a lower unit and also production cost compared to uh, advertising on tv yeah and it is also timely can be having also some geographic low flexibility so if you want to uh, know about products that are sold in Sarawak then you can listen at Sarawak FM or Cats FM they can even use the advertisement sorry the advertising that they are using are also in the local uh, languages yeah let's like Sarawakian languages or if you listen to the if you're Chinese and you are listening to the Chinese uh, radio station they will be speaking in Mandarin okay so those are in a way that it actually can be reaching towards specific audience next is TV do you still watch TV I hope you still watch TV lah, huh? especially the news. Okay, so television can be divided into networks, okay, like the ABC networks, NBC, CBS, or also Fox, right? It can also be uh, divided into independent station, cable channels, and also direct broadcast satellite TV. Direct broadcast satellite TV is just like Astro lah. Now, cable TV is the largest growth, of course, it's in the US, okay? Um, the TV can reach a huge market okay but of course like i told you the advertising time and also production cost is very expensive and there is what they call this infomercial infomercial is one kind of a, like a very long advertisement okay like 30 minutes or longer which is popular because the cheap air time and the relatively small production cost this infomercial is typically air okay when you or you put it on tv you call it on air right uh, typically on air or at the time where people don't watch tv okay uh, let's say after 12 midnight then when you open sorry you, you don't open you watch your tv uh, um that those hours typically they will advertise about some products okay just like um the go shop kind of uh informational but go shop is actually a different a different channel okay but if let's say you suddenly see that kind of uh, go shop kind of advertisement on the non go shop tv so that is actually informational right next is the internet i think this is very very close to you right because you always on the net 
Okay, so popular internet sites and also search engines generally will sell this advertising space called the banners or even when you Google things, right? There are also um, advertisement that Google sell because the moment that customer, not customer, the moment that users uh, put the keyword of uh, the product or uh, the brand name or uh, anything that is related to your product, your advertisement will pop up the first um, search results, right? Other than the banners itself. Now, the web advertisers also becoming more targeted with their approach to advertising by studying the clickstream media like your um, whatever things that you have been searching for. Let's say you Google um, new phone 2020, okay? New phone 2020, you Google that thing. You can try this, yeah? And then let's say um, you click on, let's say, iPhone or you click on Oppo. You like Oppo so much, you can click on Oppo. So what happened is that um, after you close that particular browser, this is when you don't clear your cookies and also your catch, yeah? You go to your social media, like your Instagram or your Facebook, okay? Then you will start to see that there are uh, advertisement, okay, about phones on your social media, on your, uh, what do you call it, um, news feed, okay, on the news feed. So this is what the big data kind of thing done, all right? So that they know or they keep, especially Google, they, they do keep whatever that you search, and then they will actually display whatever that you have searched on your other uh, platform of your social media and especially on your newsfeed. Okay, you try to do that and let me know whether it happens to you or not because I've did that before. I try to look for printer on Google. I, I try to compare some brand over another brand on, on Google. So I click uh, on some uh, websites like uh, HP, Fuji Xerox, um, another one is what is that called again uh, Toshiba printer okay and after that I go to my social media go to my Instagram and I started to see that there are many advertisement on printers on my newsfeed okay so that is what they do they are becoming more targeted to the approach by studying this click stream whatever I click so they remember that and they know what I'm looking for all right or you can try another one like a uh, flight to uh, KL for example then you started to see on your social media uh, there are advertisement from booking.com from Agoda or uh, some Trivago kind of thing to, to tell you where to stay in KL and so on okay it's amazing but of course at the same time it's scary because of your privacy data also um, been like you know exposed okay Okay, moving on to the sixth one, which is out of home or outdoor advertisement, OOH, yeah? or they call it the out of home, and also outdoor. It is a flexible, low cost medium that may take a variety of forms, such as on the billboards, skywriting, advertisement in and on modes of transportation as well. That is when you can see on your bus, for example, there are advertisements on your bus, isn't it? Okay, and it reach broad and diverse market, so it can be um, uh, seen by many people, okay, that is out of home. And lastly, the alternative media, which includes some facsimile machines, fax machine, yeah, uh, this one typically done in offices lah, because only in office have machines, uh, fax machine. Okay, video shopping carts, electronic place-based media, the interactive computer advertising, especially on your uh, mobile phones, games, yeah. Uh, when you want to move on to the next level if you buy if you don't buy the apps then you use it for free so there is an uh, advertisement in that particular game before you can move on to the next level you have to watch that particular advertisement so there is alternative media okay or it can be also in the cinema and of course okay uh, sometimes when you watch it you watch some uh, video on your uh, social networks suddenly there is an advertisement in the middle of the video so that is actually video advertising lah, right so these are some pictures and also examples of the OOH just now out of home advertisement here so it's on the bus on the truck okay it could be on the building okay 
uh, in the supermarket itself, you have this LED screens, okay, or in the train station where it is using this kind of watch advertisement for the handle for the customer to actually hold on to, right? This is actually an electric car by Chevrolet where it shows that uh, this is how the car is being charged to the switch. This is an, uh, what I call it, skywriting. This one, if you watch um, some movies, yeah, they do show these kind of uh, things on the uh, on that particular movie. So that is actually uh, skywriting or even the they, they do have a plane that bring this kind of uh, banner or balloons okay, on the sky. These are some other alternative media where you, you can see it on your trolley okay, or your shopping carts and so on. Yeah. Okay. Now, last part, which is the media selection consideration. So there are many media to choose. Okay. Which one that you want to choose or, or how many you want to use in order for you to advertise your product. First, you need to look at the cost per contact. Okay. Which is the cost of reaching one member of the target market. If your target market is very huge, very large, then it is, um, what they call it, is worth for you or viable for you to invest into a very expensive um, media, okay? And when you talk about the reach, which refers to the number of target consumer exposed to a commercial at least once over a period of time, such as uh, four weeks. So you want to see how many times will the customer reach the advertisement? Okay, in a week or in a month or in a day. Okay, there is reachability. For example, newspapers. So newspapers normally one time because people only read newspaper once a day or let's say you are exposed to that newspaper once because you don't read um, last year's newspaper or last month's newspapers, isn't it? Unless you wanted to find something there. But um, when in daily basis, when you reach, oh, sorry, when the advertisement using a newspaper can reach customers only once in a day. Uh, unlike the uh, advertisement on TV, for example, have you ever noticed that when you watch that TV channel, right, a drama, TV Tiga, ka, you know, your uh, Astro punya drama, ka, during the commercial break, okay, you will see many times the same advertisement. Okay, in that, let's say, one hour duration. So, let's say in that one hour, there are four times commercial break. So, you are actually exposed to four times of that particular advertisement. Of course, you normally don't really watch advertisement during the air. La. You will always go grab some drinks, go to the toilet and so on, right? Now. Okay, but then again, this counted as the reachability or the reach of the uh, advertisement to the consumer or the uh, market. Next is the frequency measures. Okay, frequency here measures the intensity of coverage in a specific medium, and is the number of times an individual is exposed to a brand message during a specific time period. It's similar like the reachability, but the reachability means like um, let's say it's only once a week, but uh, or once in uh, four weeks. But uh, when you talk about frequency, how many times? Could that particular customer be able to see or get exposed to the advertisement? For example, magazine. Magazine could be having a very huge or large frequency because uh, unlike newspapers, you read magazine and you keep magazines, right? Newspaper, you always recycle, lah. you just buang or you tunggu China datang ambil your newspaper, right? All newspaper kind of thing. But magazine you don't really throw it away after you have read your magazine you will always keep it okay but somehow or other you will be able to be exposed again to the same advertisement over and over again in the magazine okay next is the audience selectivity which is the medium's ability to reach a precisely defined market okay and then you have the flexibility of the medium, which can be extremely important to the advertiser, how flexible it is, especially in terms of the language that you can use in that particular advertisement, um, the design of it or the timing of it. Like normally, if you are putting it on air, uh, the advertisement are actually by 
blocks. Blocks could include by 20 seconds, okay, per block. So you have to either make sure that your advertisement is 20 seconds or let's say 40 seconds. Okay, so that is by block. The flexibility is not like as, as you want, like you want to do only 13 minutes, sorry, 13 seconds, or you want to do 15 seconds of advertisement, okay, on TV. So that is not really flexible because they are, uh, the timing are being sold by block, which is typically 20 seconds per block. So you either have to really make sure that your advertisement equal to 20 seconds or 40 seconds in that particular um, number. Next is the noise level. Noise level is the level of distraction to the target audience in a medium. Uh, noise here includes whatever uh, distract, distraction, yeah? like in the newspaper, if you put your advertisement there, uh, what are the likelihood of people will actually get distracted towards other advertisement, okay? especially when you read classifieds. Do you know classifieds or not? If you read these papers, there is this one particular um, section here, yeah, which is called classifieds. In that classifieds, they have all advertisement, and they are normally cheap, yeah. All advertisement in that classifieds. Typically, if you want to find jobs, yeah, then you start to book up the newspaper, and then you wanted to see all the vacancies, okay, that are available for you to apply, okay. Or in a magazine, uh. If you read magazine, yeah, because I do read Clio magazine, for example. So uh, in that magazine, the first few pages of that magazine will be advertisement. And it is all about different types of products. Some are your competing brands as well. So these are actually distraction or the noise level of the uh, medium towards getting attention or getting your um, eyes to stop and actually read and look into that particular advertisement. And lastly, the lifespan, which means the message can either quickly fade or persist as tangible copy to be carefully studied or for future references. Like if you do it on skywriting, for example, skywriting, come on, it will not last forever. Perhaps it will only last for uh, one minute, I think, before the wind blow it off, right? Because it is using the smoke, yeah? Uh, there is the lifespan or in the newspaper, for example, the lifespan is very short because people only read once a day and then after that they don't read anymore. Or um, on TV, now things are on TV can also be found on YouTube. So you can actually look up and also YouTube again, YouTube again, Google, no, you don't Google, you search in YouTube that particular advertisement. If you're lucky, you'll be able to find it and it will be again available for uh, you to be exposed to that particular product or that advertisement okay so most advertisement now are actually on youtube um, because they want people to get exposed to that advertisement over and over again that means the lifespan of that particular advertisement is longer okay so with that we have finished the first part of this chapter which is on the advertising you have learned on advertising just now you also have learned on the idea concept and also the goal of promotion yeah don't forget so next week we'll continue with the second part of the chapter and i will try to cover the sales promotion tools and also public relations all right thank you guys have a nice weekend bye